Have you decided it's time to add a canine to your family dynamics, but you're unsure on what breed to get? Well, in today's video, we're gonna compare the differences between the Shih Tzu and the Cocker Spaniel. Welcome back to the Fenrir Shih Tzu Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Charlie and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. Everything we do here is dedicated to helping you find the perfect breed for you and then helping you become a high level canine leader who can raise the perfect canine companion. If that sounds like you, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to make sure you never miss another upload of the Fenrir Shih Tzu Show. So let's dive in and start with the history of both of these canines. The Shih Tzu had their origins in Tibet and were originally known as Tibetan lion dogs. They were highly prized for thousands of years by Tibetan monks. They kept them in the monasteries because they made excellent watchdogs as well as being loyal and trustworthy companions. Tibetan lion dogs were often gifted to Chinese emperors and were kept in the imperial palace. It's believed that the Chinese then bred them with the Pekingese and Chinese pug. This mix of breeds gave the Shih Tzu its unique look, which is very different from the Tibetan lion dog, which has now been renamed as the Lhasa Apso. They first appeared in mainland Europe in the 20th century, around the time of the First World War, before coming to the UK in the 1920s. They were not recognised by the UK Kennel Club until 1949 and it wasn't until 1969 that they gained American Kennel Club recognition. Cocker Spaniels as we know them first originated from the UK where they were bred for hunting purposes. However, their origins can be traced back to the 1800s in Spain as the word Spaniel means Spanish dog. The term Cocker comes from the use of hunting Eurasian woodcock. The breed was later brought to the United States where it was bred with different standards in order to hunt the American woodcock. After the Second World War, Cocker Spaniels became very popular and in 1984 they were registered as the number one breed for the American Kennel Club. Prior to 1870, where they were only requirement for a Spaniel to be classed as a Cocker Spaniel was that the, the dog weighed under £25. This later changed to include ancestry as well as weight. Standing between 9 and 10 and a half inches tall at the withers and weighing anywhere between 9 to 16 pounds, the Shih Tzu is certainly a small breed. However, they are incredibly sturdy. They're said to have chrysanthemum face and their heads are broad and round with a lot of space between their eyes. They also have a nice beard full of whiskers with hair growing upright on their muzzles, hence the chrysanthemum appearance. They're famous for their long show coats and top knots that keep the hair out of their eyes. The Shih Tzu comes in a many different colours of coats and any colour is acceptable except mill. The Cocker Spaniel's appearance is very different to that of the Shih Tzu's. They have round heads with square muzzles and long hanging ears which are covered with long feathered hair. They also have the same feathered hair on their legs, underbelly and chest too. Cocker Spaniels come in a variety of different colours. Some come in solid colours of red, black or tan. Others come in bi-colouring or tri-colouring. These colours include black and white, black and tan and black and white with tan flashes. The American Kennel Club have categorised Cocker Spaniels into three different colourings when used for showing. These include black, party colour and ASCOB which means any solid colour other than black. A male cook spaniel usually ranges in height from 15 and a half to 16 inches, which is around 39 to 49 centimeters at the shoulder, and weigh up to 14 and a half kilograms or 31 pounds. Females are usually slightly smaller. Hey guys, if you're having any kind of difficulty with your dogs and you wish their behavior would be as good as my perfect canine companions here are today, I've got the perfect thing for you. I've got a completely free course called The Principles of Canine Behavior. I created it. It's all about the things that I've learned from my experience and skill set as working as a professional canine behaviorist there's tons in there about how you can modify bad behaviors and turn them into dream behaviors to have amazing dogs just like these so if you are interested it is completely free there'll be a link in the description box below i can't wait to see you over there shih tzus are a lively and com uh, shih tzus are lively confident and outgoing little characters they love nothing more than being a part of the family and being involved in everything that goes on in the household for those reasons they continue to be a popular choice of family pet and companion dog. They adore human contact and are most happiest when they're around the people they love. They're a great choice of first time owners because they're intelligent and are always willing to e and eager to please. Shih Tzus can be wary and suspicious of strangers although they rarely show any sort of aggressive behaviour towards strangers. Instead they prefer to just keep the distance until they're comfortable. They have a low to moderate energy level and require routine physical exercise such as 2 20 to 30 minute walks a day but they also need to be mentally stimulated. As we've previously mentioned Shih Tzus are intelligent 
intelligent, but they also have an independent side to their characters, which means their training and socialization will start as early as possible. They can also be a little stubborn at times, so it's important to bear in mind that a lot of patience and consistency are needed when training and socializing them. The Cocker Spaniel's known for being a gentle, loving, and easygoing breed. However, they can also be very lively due to them being bred as hunting dogs. There are mixed reviews about training in Cocker Spaniels. Every puppy is different, but they can be known for being stubborn. This can affect obedience training. They're best suited to training with positive reinforcement, plenty of praise and treats. They can be a sensitive breed that don't deal well with harsh corrections or tones. They can also be hard dogs to house train if not done consistently. This aside, they love to be beside you and receive lots of love and affection. Cocker Spaniels can easily get separation anxiety if it's not managed from puppyhood. They are very adaptable and can live just about anywhere as long as they receive plenty of mental and physical stimulation, daily walks and plenty of play sessions. The Cocker Spaniel needs around an hour of exercise a day to prevent them from becoming bored or destructive. They'll happily join you on walks, hikes, jogs, and they'll even join you for a swim. They do very well at agility, so this might be something to train your canine in. Shih Tzus generally get along well with children, but do require a good level of socialization to feel completely comfortable. Although they are a friendly and affectionate breed, they can often feel threatened by the boisterous and unpredictable nature of little ones. This can occasionally lead them to be nippy when they do feel uneasy. This is something to think about if you do have young children. Shih Tzus can get along well with children, but it's equally important to teach a child how to behave around them and how to respect them and their space. As we always say, although any interaction between children and dogs should be supervised by an adult to make sure things don't get too boisterous. With regards to other dogs and pets, they generally get along well as they are a social breed by nature. They can be a little feisty at times, especially when introducing them to new dogs or other animals. Cocker Spaniels are generally very good with children, other pets and people out the family circle. It's advised that they should be introduced to any household pets at a young age so they can learn how to interact calmly with these other animals. It's also advised to do a lot of socialization of different kinds with your Cocker Spaniel as soon as you receive your puppy to help them become consistent, well-rounded dogs. It's good for your Cocker Spaniel to see different types of dogs, people, other animals and outdoor sights and sounds. You can do this from eight weeks old by carrying your puppy with you when you're out. Use a special dog carrier until they become old enough to go for walks. Interactions between your canine and children or animals should always be supervised as every dog does have a level of prey drive and accidents can happen. The Shih Tzu and the Cocker Spaniel are two very different types of dog. Both both breeds adore children and will make an excellent family companion. Both have similar exercise needs, although the Cocker Spaniel will happily do more than the required hour. The Shih Tzu needs a little bit more grooming than the Cocker Spaniel, however it's down to your own personal preference and needs as to which of these beautiful breeds is the right choice for you. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button and get involved down on the comment section below. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. We have three dedicated Shih Tzu videos coming here every single week. So I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Shih Tzu Show.